All right, so welcome to the Python Meetup group. We have been around for quite a bit of time since 2014. We started in the back of Sugar House Coffee as just an idea with a couple of folks who were like, hey, we need a Salt Lake City oriented Python Meetup group that you know is close and easy to go. And we actually initially started as a web development meetup group, but we grew and grew and grew to well, actually it took us one meetup. <laughs> we decided we're just gonna be the Python group. Um, kind of interesting to watch the trends. We started with uh, Python uh, as a web development kind of focus meetup group, but now definitely it's starting to see a lot more data science. Um, and yeah, kind of interesting to see where the ecosystem's going. Of course, we've had Python 3 since then, and now we're up to 3.10 and we'll talk about that. Um, yeah, started by myself and a couple others who are not here today. Um, and we are now part of Utah Python, which is a Utah-based uh, nonprofit where basically uh, lets us do things like have fundraisers and do raffle prizes and make sure that the community is supported. Um, things like uh, getting Python uh, instructors to school uh, uh, and things like that. So. That's uh, Utah Python. Let me find. I usually have a whole spiel, but I'm just going to go through here. There's other groups around Utah. There's Python Utah North. Um, they are the Logan Brigham City group. We have the Salt Lake City Pi Ladies. You don't need to be a lady to join the Pi Ladies, but they are trying to empower more women to join uh, programming in general. Uh, Python at the Point is the Provo Meetup group. They will actually be having an in person mask on event this month. So check them out on Meetup. Um, I'm hoping, no promises yet, based on case numbers, we may have an in-person November meetup, but it would probably also be masks on and vaccination required, of course. More details with that to follow. We haven't decided anything yet. Probably, we will make it a point to keep the Zoom going, though. I do like that we have uh, started doing that, and yeah. Uh, let's see here. We also have quite a few others. We have the uh, Utah Aid Data Engineering Meetup. This is old. This is not. This was the last talk they did. Um, they are started by one of our co-hosts here. Um, also great to check out. Uh, Pi Data SLC, SLC Devs, quite a few others. Um, this uh, agenda itself is linked on our Meetup. Um, you can check that out. Uh, as it should be the first comment for this Meetup. So if you want to link. Uh, there it is, and you should be able to edit in here. Um, that, let me see. Any questions with any of us so far? Did you expect the PHP group, and now you're realizing, oh, this is the Python group? No? Okay, good, because this is the Python group. Quickly, we have a few GitHub repos. Um, they need updating. Feel free if you ever want to support your local meetup group. We could always use a PR. We can always use speakers. Um, sponsors, we can also always use Pythonistas like you. Thank you. Um, usually we do an optional $5 donation for the meetup, but uh, this time it's more of a, a, like, this is more of a, if you want to donate, just hit us up. If you want to sponsor, hit us up. Usually that donation would pay for pizza, but can't really send you pizza right now, um, unfortunately. So hopefully when we're back in person, we will be continuing to that. X Mission has uh, sponsored quite a few of our raffle prizes in the past. The University of Utah has sponsored our venue and Tech System has sponsored everything from our soiree to our uh, raffle prizes. So we'll get into what those are at the tail end of this. Uh, new sponsors are always appreciated. Um, you can check out pretty much all the money has been updated to through September from what I gather. Um, and it is available at SLC Python slash money on Meetup. And if you want to uh, help sponsor the group, please send us a Slack or a Meetup message, and myself or somebody can take it from there. And we are tax deductible. Um, something I like to do for our new members, we usually do this in person. Uh, if you like, I tried to talk about something non code. So uh, if you are new, please raise your hand. Uh, you can use the chat to do that. Um, I think it's like a, a button you can press in your Zoom bar. It's a reaction, uh, I think, where you raise your hand. 
So go ahead and raise your hand and I will see you in the chat if you're new. Starting to get a few people. Don't be shy, this is the time to introduce yourself to the rest of the team. Yay. Excellent. So, yeah, quite a few. So we'll start with Leo. Um, you can feel free if you want to uh, share your video or not or whatever. Just uh, introduce yourself, uh, introduce what do you do on a day to day, and then let us know what's your favorite Halloween costume since it's October. So I'll start actually, I'll, I'll I'm Ferris. I, for some reason, I'm an engineering manager at Invite. Um, we do genetic testing for the medical space. And my favorite Halloween costume, uh, I really like putting toddlers in uh, uh, pumpkin costumes because I just think it's adorable because it's huge and hilarious. So Leo, do you want to introduce yourself? Um, my name is Leo Abner. Um, I'm a principal at STAT at uh, Henry Schein One. And I started over there like almost two months ago. Before that, I was with Progressive Leasing. I was a uh, principal asset over there. So this is the first time I'm joining you guys, and I'm excited. Welcome to the group, Leo. Uh, what's your favorite Halloween costume? <sighs> That's a tough one. Um, I don't dress up usually, so. <laughs> it doesn't have to be one you've worn. I mean, I spotted one. Um, Mario Brothers are like, I think it's fun. Like I see like little kids are using that costume and it, it's, I think I like that one. Excellent. Yeah, I am a huge fan of like paired costumes too. If you see like a Mario and a Luigi. So, excellent. Um, excellent. Uh, Igor, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Hey, I think, yeah. Igor, Igor, whatever fits better. I'm a software engineer, just moved to Salt Lake City a couple of months ago and I'm trying to find my groups, I guess. Um, I'm a backend engineer, mainly, you know, providing data for the machine learning. And I do specialize in computer vision, uh, mainly pipelines. Um, but otherwise I don't have a title, you know, to start up, so whatever they need. Usually I have to do uh, on my spare time, I do uh, encrypted mail and and sort of uh, trying to get rid of all the unwanted emails and mail that aisle. That's, that's me. Excellent. What's your favorite Halloween costume? Mm, I don't dress up, but I like to see kids running around maybe in a, in a Ghostbusters costume. Ghostbusters is a classic. I love the Ghostbusters costume. Definitely did that in third grade. I attached a vacuum to my back. It was a very heavy costume. <laughs> did you have a chance? Welcome to Salt Lake City, by the way. Did you have a chance to head up one of the canyons in oh, the yeah. house that is the, the fall colors? That, that was the first thing I did. Excellent. You're doing it right. You're doing Salt Lake City right. So welcome yeah, to the group, every, Igor. Everything around downtown. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Uh, John Salas. Hi everyone, uh, my name's John. I just moved back to Salt Lake City actually, got done with school. Um, right now I'm working as a SCADA and database programmer for a company out of Sisters, Oregon. So I'm working remotely. Um, on my free time, I like to spend my time outside. Uh, I like to go mountain biking, hiking, climbing, I ski. Um, and I saw a pretty funny Halloween costume. I think it was on social media somewhere. It was the, it was the slinky from Toy Story where, um, one, uh, there was one little kid who was the back end and then another little kid who was the front end. So I thought that was awesome. funny. Yeah. That's like, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Like the, the pair costume, all that. Yep. <laughs> Welcome to the group, John. Welcome back to Salt Lake City. Cool. Thanks. Andrew W. Hi, yeah, I'm Andrew Woolley. I, um, I used to be a PHP developer, and I recently switched to Django and Python. I, my background is GIS, and uh, 
the Esri is the main company that does GIS and they went all in with Python. And, um, and so I picked it up there and I'm, I've been doing it off and on, but now I'm getting real serious about it. And so, yeah, that's, I'm trying to find new ways. I'm, I'm the lone developer at our small company. So um, <clears throat> I'm not, yeah. So I'm looking for uh, outside advice and input and I love to, I just looking to learn more. And uh, as far as Halloween costumes go, my favorite is when people build a little framework over their head and then it looks like their head was cut off and they're holding their head in their hands. I love that one. I think that's, that's the a, best. I saw Mary Antoinette first. I thought that was super good. That's a classic. And Mary Antoinette, that's just the cherry on top. Yeah, of yeah. The cake that she forced people to eat. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Andrew, uh, well, welcome to the group. One okay. of us, one of us. I'm glad uh, we've got somebody else off of PHP. I will say something. I selfishly started this group in part because I was a lone developer at my previous, uh, at one of my first professional roles. So totally hear you. I think you're in the right place. Definitely connect on our Slack and you can always find out more. Um, and yeah, welcome, welcome to the game. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Uh, Kurt. Hey, I'm Kurt. Uh, my laptop, my laptop webcam is disabled in the BIOS, so just audio today. But um, I'm a software engineer at Master Control. Uh, the last six months, I've been doing a lot of um, infrastructure as code and setting up some pipelines and stuff. So not too much with Python, but the year before that, uh, I uh, built out a uh, like an analytics tool uh, using Python Django, and that was a lot of fun, um, especially coming from JavaScript. So um, my favorite Halloween costume, I've got a link in the chat. It's a little girl with uh, like a box over her head, and she's carrying her own head on a platter. So I'm going to have to agree with Andrew that hands down is my favorite. Um, anyways, just uh, excited to be here and uh, get a little input from some other people. I was the only person at my company really working with Python on a day-to-day -day basis. So I thought it'd be nice to just kind of rub shoulders with some other Pythonistas. Anyways, thanks. Yeah, excellent. And good choice of Halloween costume, it would seem. Now I'm reconsidering mine this year. So this is another selfish thing. You know, I'm just trying to get Everybody has uh, input on what I should be for Halloween this year. So, uh, uh, Matthew. I'm gonna keep my audio off uh, right now. It's, uh, I'm in a dark room with a bright screen, so. Uh, yeah, my name is Matthew Jess. Uh, my background has been more data work. And so that's kind of how I got into the Python just for machine learning capabilities and getting it closer to being more production style um, models. Python was kind of where it needed to be. And so right now I do less of machine learning with a startup and we kind of specialize in helping companies who uh, need help in their analytics space. Um, and uh, we'll either do just extract and load um, or uh, pretty much if, if they are just growing really fast and have a lot of, need a lot of help, so they'll just bring us on. So Python, I, I'll use uh, just depending on the, the job, but uh, I, it's definitely one of my favorite tools to use, and so that's why I'm here. Excellent. What's your favorite Halloween question? Oh, that's a, I forgot about that one. Uh, uh, favorites hard to say but funniest would definitely be see like just a family and then the kids are the minions and then uh the dad is igor kind of from despicable me <laughs> yeah uh, funny That's show, a good, so. it's a classic as well oh well, welcome to the group uh, thanks paul am i saying your name right I Hi there. I, I've been actually to a couple meetings. Uh, this is the first time I've introduced myself, but uh, I, I mainly do network automation, primarily using uh, Python and Ansible. And uh, as far as I'm pretty weak on the uh, Halloween costumes, what I have traditionally used is either a skier or a cowboy, which is obviously very weak. And 
one of my sons did the cutoff head in the in the bucket, which is a classic. You know, now I have a really good idea. I just watched Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid again, and now I have a toddler, so maybe I should make him the Sundance Kid. And <laughs> there you go. I'll be Butch. <laughs> but yeah, excellent ideas. Love it. Welcome, welcome again to the group. I'm glad to see you again. And thank you. Thanks for uh, stepping up, introducing yourself. Uh, Ulan or yes. Ulan? Ulan. 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 Hello, everybody. This is my first time here. I appreciate the warm welcome. Um, I'm actually in San Francisco, but uh, maybe the upside of the pandemic is that you can make new friends around the world and share ideas. And sometimes, indeed, you are the, own, the lone soldier, uh, the uh, person who is not really fitting everywhere, but the person who everyone can rely upon. But it's an opportunity to find like-minded people uh, from around the world. And so that's the uh, positive takeaway that I take from this uh, pandemic. And thanks to Zoom, of course. I wish yeah. I were a shareholder <laughs> earlier. <laughs> oh, uh, I definitely bought shares at the beginning oh, of this. I was like, oh, I should probably get in on this. But anyway. Good for you. Uh, yeah, I'm more of a finance guy, but I do happen to be also technically inclined. And that said, uh, so my exposure to data comes from databases, uh, SQL, Snowflake. Uh, uh, for a long time, I have used uh, v VBA. Uh, it served me well, but it has its limitations and uh, Python is just magic uh, compared to what we have seen before. And uh, I started using it, uh, learning it as well. Uh, more deeply starting last year, I was able to build some internal applications uh, successfully, but I want to continue the momentum and uh, learn more. And at the end of the day, it's very rewarding when things happen at the click of a button, something that used to take hours to complete, that takes literally a few seconds. And uh, the beauty of Python is that you can do it uh, outside of the Excel spreadsheet. Uh, VBA only limited you to Windows products, but now you can do it cross platform. So uh, when I was in college, I had a dilemma either to do business or software engineering. Now, in the retrospect, I kind of kicked myself saying I should have done this. Apparently, I like it and <laughs> it would have been better for me. <laughs> so, uh, another tangent I'm taking in this is like expansion of my um, mind as well as uh, future opportunities. And uh, my favorite costume is actually Wizard uh, because I think it's uh, in line with the spirit of the holiday, the magic. And uh, I just like it. Excellent. Wizard is how I feel when I code some really good Python. So it seems very apropos. Uh, excellent. Anybody else who wanted to introduce themselves? And once and twice. All right. Well, let's keep, uh, keep right on trucking on this. Uh, doo -doo. Uh, yeah. So thanks for introducing yourselves. Uh, let's go. So, oh, so here's a section that we like to do for our meetup, kind of who's hiring, who's looking, you know, we're a professional development kind of meetup, even if uh, I'm extremely informal and unprofessional at times. Uh, so if you know of somebody in the Valley or remote who's hiring Python uh, career, as long as they conform to uh, the Python code of conduct, which is to say there are no... Uh, discriminatory clauses in the hiring, which I don't think anybody has really popped up, then yes, please let us know about that opportunity. Um, a few that I will point out are Python Jobs HQ. This has kind of been spun off in the last couple of years and gotten a lot bigger. Um, it's referenced by the Python Software Foundation. Tech Systems, who sponsored us quite a bit. Kate Conroe's on our Slack. You can always hit her up on our Slack or you can uh, send her an email or send me a message and I can make sure that you're connected. She's a great recruiter, knows how to make sure that she's matching up with uh, what your skill set is. I work at Invite. We do genomics testing. 
if you're interested in that kind of space, we're looking for Django uh, software developers in biotech. Uh, it's very rewarding. We're very mission driven. Uh, it's my dream job. I dig it. We're looking for three senior roles and one junior. So we even have a junior role uh, available. We're also looking for a project manager. So if you know a project manager, send them my way, please. Uh, Vertigris is Dylan's uh, thing, but he's not here, but you can hit him up at, uh, uh, at Dylan. They do Internet of Things kind of things, and they're looking for data science kind of folks. So if you want web, hit me up. If you want data science, hit Dylan up. And if you're not sure, there's other roles here. Uh, other, anybody know of other opportunities that they'd like to share? Feel free to raise your hand and I will see you. No? Nobody knows of other stuff. Doesn't necessarily need to be in and around the valley. All right, well, if uh, there are no comments here, we can move on to who's looking. So now in this part of our lovely convo, now's the, your chance to kind of show off uh, and present yourself, market yourself to the group. Um, yeah, so feel free to raise your hand if you are looking for a Python role at the moment. This is the fun, awkward part of the Zoom where I wait for somebody to raise their hand. There was a study, it said, I think it was like seven seconds from a prompt to a response with, and I think the average room size was like 30 in that study. Huh? No? It looks like everybody oh. has a job. Yeah, everybody loves their job and wants to stay, even though it's a white hot job market. I've never seen in all my years of uh, doing this, which has been close to eight, I've never seen the market this crazy for, I've only seen it once and it wasn't during Python. It was uh, the year Y2K bubble, not to say we're in a bubble now, but um, yeah, it's an excellent market. I think it's good for all of us, but also it's an opportunity to develop yourself. So you're here, so you're wanting to develop yourself. So that's good. Um, yeah, let's talk community news then. Unless anybody, this is the last call. If you want or looking for a job, raise your hand. Oh, and I will extend the offer that I always extend. I'm more than happy to help with any uh, resume job search kind of stuff. If you're ever in that situation, hit me up in Slack and I can schedule something and more than happy to mentor and coach, especially if it's your first like formal role or you want some tips on what your resume should look like and what you kind of want to do with your career. I'm happy to do that kind of coaching with you. Um, yeah. It's kind of one of the benefits of being in this group is you get to talk to me. I don't know if that's a benefit actually, but anyway. Uh, actually, I'll take you off on this. Uh, I'm interested to enter the engineering space. My skills are somewhat limited, but uh, aptitude is good. So uh, some coaching would be very helpful. Thank you. Sounds great. We'll take this offline. Hit me up in the Slack and we can move forward and I'll email you, you like a calendar invite. Yeah, no problem. That's Ulan speaking, right? Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah. Thank awesome. you. Um, excellent. Well, if not, let's move on to community news. Uh, Python 3.10 is out. Woo. Um, yeah, that's fun. Uh, we can take a look at uh, some of the changes today, maybe, if we have time. Um, I really like this because I've been playing with a lot of set theory for work because it turns out that genetics inheritance patterns really like some of these uh, structures so we can get into that if anybody ever wants to like crack open a beer and i'll show you kind of the fun stuff with that but yeah there's some some really nice stuff i think the other one if i remember let's see if it's listed uh well i forget the way to put this but basically exceptions are free which is to say they cost almost no compute time i think they're pre-computed so that's kind of an interesting one. If you work in a large ETL pipeline, you may want to consider uh, 
upgrading simply for that. I'm not sure though, you'd have to do your own benchmarking to see how much it would improve, but it's kind of interesting. Um, parameter specification is something I wanted to dig in. Maybe we can dig in as a group, but yeah. Uh, let's go back to our, our agenda, other community news. Oh, it looks like somebody added transform X. Uh, who would like to speak to that? Who added this? So I added it. It's a conference that's going on today and tomorrow. It's a lot of ML types, temp, ML, AI, deep learning. Um, one of the participants was Elon Musk. So there's a lot of uh, famous influencers that are on the on the conference, but it's it's been really good that I've been watching. So it's all day tomorrow too. Yeah, thanks for the, the reference there, John. Any other community news related to programming, Python? There was a there was a site that was down yesterday, I think. It was kind of small. Uh, what was it? Instaface or like Facegram? That. It was one of those. Anyway, that's that's the random news I can think of in the tech world. <laughs> uh, yeah. I've had my own DNS issues for the last two months that I finally got resolved. So nothing but uh, hearts for that. Also, my neighbor is uh, literal. My, my next door neighbor is a Facebook reliability engineer. So I have a feeling he needs to get uh, inebriated with me at some point, but I should offer and extend that offer to him. But yeah. Cool. If there's no other community news, we can dive in. I think I'll go a little bit backwards and I'll kind of explain what the format of this is going to look like. So we've been having some issues with uh, getting specific speakers on specific topics. I feel like everybody's busy, myself included. I am in the engineering manager role at my work now. I'm not really just a dev anymore. Not to say that anybody's ever just a dev, but definitely been feeling like I'm doing a lot more synchronous Zoom meetings rather than having like, hey, I can work on this whenever I want um, kind of thing. So hard to find speakers specifically for these meetups. So decided to do a little bit different thing today. Um, but before we dive into that, if you're interested in speaking um, or have an interesting topic idea, or you see one of these many, many, many topic ideas and you think you could just knock it out of the park with a talk on that, um, please hit us up in the Slack. Um, hit us up on the Zoom message right now. Feel free to raise your hand right now if you want to pitch your talk to the rest of the group. Um, yeah, kind of going to go backwards there. So yeah, next meetup speaker. Um, yeah, we're still open for November and December. I will also say that PyCon uh, request for talks will be coming. PyCon is in Salt Lake City. Um, so if you want extreme professional development, that might be a really great way to fast track yourself. Um, give a talk at our meetup group, test it out, see if you want to submit it to PyCon. PyCon will be in Salt Lake City for 2022, which is crazy to think about. Well, that's my pitch for being a, a speaker at our group. I'm starting to get messages already. This is great. Okay. Okay. Well, we can uh, we'll, we can take more of that offline. Let's dive into what I got today. Kind of the discussion topics. Threw this together very much last minute. And apologies that it is very much last minute, but uh, kind of put the the topics together at the beginning of uh, last month uh, when I had to cancel the the group. Just timing was not working out. Um, canceled the, that specific cancel September's meetup. Um, so put this together, kind of a few topics I think I'm really good at talking about. Um, and I kind of separated them out into, how do you say? Uh, there we go. So kind of a whirlwind tour of some fun Python libraries. There are, these are not necessarily like the killer libraries or the most important libraries, but they are well-documented. They're easy to use, and I think they have a good, uh, 
uh, amount of depth to them that I think that we could do kind of a beginning, intermediate, advanced uh, talk. So kind of, uh, this is kind of the agenda I got over here. Um, as we talk about this, if you feel like you have some uh, experience in this and I'm saying the wrong thing, please uh, raise your hand and let me know and I'll, I'll bring you in or you can even interrupt me on Zoom, which I'm sure people are getting used to now. Uh, yeah. So with that, I'll kind of dive in. I'm going to do kind of a whirlwind tour. Started, uh, if you're, I like to put this in the perspective, especially for the more advanced folk. If you're ever teaching somebody Python, how would you go about it? And uh, I specifically tell people these days, just go and install VS Code. There are lots of other opinionated and maybe more open source uh, uh, text editors available, but VS Code's definitely, well, it's free. It's not going out of the park. It's well integrated with GitHub. There's a, and with Python. So there's a multitude of reasons, I would say, to start with that. Um, setting up a Git library and Python repo, um, just so everybody here is clear on how I did that. I have a question. Oh yes, go ahead. Um, why do you prefer VS Code over PyCharm? I actually use PyCharm on my day-to-day, -day, but like I said, in terms of uh, teaching a beginner, I would always suggest the simpler of the IDE and also, you know, VS Code is free. So I'm with you. I use PyCharm day-to-day -day for work. I live and breathe PyCharm. I actually am the expert at my job now on mm -hmm. setting up people's environments in PyCharm. But I will still, for especially for this meetup group, I try to do my demos in VS Code simply to keep things accessible. But that's a great question. Thank you. Is that Leo? Yeah, yeah. Because as far as I know, like PyCharm is free too, right? Yes, the community edition is free. Yeah, um, that's a good point. Like, so before... if you do want to dive into that, but I think what I will what I will say again though is that the simpler the better. I I used to say just show somebody a. Oh, what's the other editor? This is a good question. It's a tiny Python editor. I think it's called Minio or Mu Mu editor. That's it. Let me find out. So for kids, it's in micro. Sorry? I assume you means micro. Oh, yeah, yeah, mu, mu. So this was actually designed for CircuitPython, which we will be raffling off one of those pieces of hardware at the end of this. But I think it's great for absolute beginner programmers, or if you need to set up a computer lab quickly with a bunch of text editors that are all the same and even has like a dark mode, mu editor is great. Um, gives the, the built-in uh, 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 doc strings and all of those little niceties, but it doesn't you know, get in the way of, of understanding Python code. So definitely an option. Um, for our demo today, I opened a folder. I have a really easy, uh, I don't have a tree installed on this. I have a, a very basic, actually it's all flat, so I don't know what I'm talking about here. So. Um, these are all the files that I have. I already pushed up the uh, repo. If you want to follow along, I will put that in the, uh, the Zoom link and I will add it to the Slack after this. Um, but yeah, we're going to kind of play with this and edit as we go. As I'm going, I will actually be making git commits and I'll show how to do, you know, maybe what a good git commit could look like, what's the point of git, and we'll play with that. Uh, and yeah, let's dive into setting up the Python uh, repo. Essentially, what I would do uh, now as a Python, what, 3? Is it 3.9 or 3.8 that added this? But basically, once you have Python installed um, in the command line, you can just say Python, and you'll set up a virtual environment. And this says, hey, I need the virtual environment module, which is now a built-in. And then I personally like to set it up in this dot folder, which will make it hidden. So once you set that up, this will basically install another version, but it's a pinned version of Python, and it'll install a pinned version of any of the libraries we install. So pretend I ran that, because I already did. And then this is kind of an interesting command. Um, dot means inside the context of this directory. It's also equivalent to saying source but we'll just do dot because I think it looks nicer. And then dot b and b bin 
activate. And we just came up with a bunch of steps on how to get going, right? And we don't want to be jerks. So let's do, let's add some installation steps. So who's, uh, who's not familiar with uh, Markdown, by the way? Feel free to raise your hand or just give a thumbs up or some kind of reaction. I think everybody is. That's great. Oh, we got we got one for so Austin. This is marked down. Fuse Reddit. This is what they use for uh, editing. So as you can see on the left, code becomes HTML like style stuff on the right. So I'm going to say, oh, let's add some steps. Step zero: install Python. And we don't want to be jerks. So let's find a Python. Uh, no, yeah. And yeah, if we want to be fancy with our syntax, we'll just make a link like that. What's the editor that you're using to type this? This is VS Code. Oh. And then the last step is pip install dash r requirements dot text. So now, you know, we've updated our readme. So let's make a commit. As you can see right here in the, I, I personally like to do all my Git stuff in the command line. I actually hired a couple new devs uh, and I found out that they don't use the command line for Git anymore. And I think that's blasphemy, but I'm opinionated and I'm willing to change my opinion. So I'm gonna do this in the command line. Um, git commit, add everything, and here's my message. So add anything that changed. This is kind of a shortcut to adding. Um, and I like to do the imperative commits. So my commit messages personally, I like to make sure they say this commit will, and then I answer the question here. So update the readme with installation instructions. So now that we've committed that, I want to send it back up to the server. Um, and to do that, I'll just say git push origin name. And so now that's sent up. And as you can see in here, if I refresh, you'll see we have three commits. Um, and now you can see just how last minute I am because you know I only started this an hour ago. I had some code, but I only put it on git fairly recently. Why well, use git? Um, for people who ask, this is kind of what I will immediately show them. You can see, you know, every change. You can be uh, very explicit about what you've changed. You can take in other people's changes. It's all change management. Uh, let's. I think. Be, nope. You are just being mean today. What do you mean it's not found? Okay. Okay, there we go. So, for example, you know, we could go back to this commit if we wanted to. Um, yeah, I won't, I won't dive into Git anymore. I think people kind of get the gist. Um, if you want more information on how to use Git, I would recommend. Uh, let's see. How about this? I'll add more info at the end. Let's do that as we go and we're doing this. So I would recommend for people who use Git, do, 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 do. anybody know where these docs are if you want to link to them? There is an excellent tutorial that they've added now. And now you just see me like Googling to find the answer.
Okay, I'll link this one. This is a good one. There is a there's a much oh look somebody has the book. Thanks, Leo. Um, there's a really good interactive. Let me see. Interactive GitHub or Git tutorial. There's an online one. I would. This is it. This is what I was looking for. Learn Git branching. If you grok this, you know 80% of what you need to for Git. So I'm going to add that tutorial in this repo and we'll push it up after. So, boom. Yeah, I just um, want to say that is an awesome source. Like, which one? The one you just posted. This one? Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, incredibly visual, which is definitely one thing I needed. This, uh, yeah, if we want to rebase. Uh, this is what I actually assign as an interview question. <laughs> so, yeah, this one's hairy. If you can get to this one, I have a job for you. Um, yeah. We won't dive too much into Git, but I will say this is part of the ecosystem uh, that defines a successful versus novice Pythonista. So that's where I'll leave that. Let's keep going. And I hope this is useful. I'm sorry if this is like a last minute kind of talk, but I figured we could at least talk some Python stuff and code together and y'all can make fun of my awful Python skills. So yeah, so we've done this. We have Git, we've set up a Python repo. Let's talk about Pillow and Flask. So we're gonna kind of focus on these two libraries. Maybe we'll talk about Docker and how to use that. I did mention Django in the meetup talk and I apologize that we're not doing uh, Django. Obviously, Django is the superior web framework, and it's not necessarily, but it's just I like to troll people and say that it is the superior one because everybody's opinionated. I like Django personally on my day to day, but I taught and I teach people Python using Flask. So we're going to use Flask today. Again, uh, selecting the easier tool uh, rather than the the more important one, or rather than the one that may be like more professional, right? So anyway, let's talk pillow. Uh, who has used the Python imaging library before? Please raise your hand. Anybody? And sorry if you can hear my uh, toddler screaming in the background, I've got quite a few reactions. Excellent. Uh, let's see. So I have a few people who've used the Python imaging library. Uh, uh, long story short, we're going to use Pillow, but it's pretty much using, uh, oh, and somebody wants to hear your thoughts on Docker and 310 uh, in the chat. Uh, OK, so and then also seeing in the chat, uh, Andrew, you had to you've never had to use git but you have to get good at it i agree with you there uh i forced myself to use git when i was a lone dev so that i wouldn't be a jerk to my future self so if you keep that in mind you might have more motivation to use git going forward um so i'll i'll, I'll say that um uh, let's keep going what was we, i'm going to talk about pillow so this is pillow it's the replacement for the Python imaging library. Um, and actually, it's such a drop in replacement that it is the same import. So from pill import image, and we're going to open an image and I took a nice photo of uh, us the other day. So I think everybody's in this shot. I'm not sure. San Francisco is a little bit over here. So maybe not. Um, but yeah, this is this is taken from uh, Big Cottonwood Canyon, and you can kind of see downtown way over here. And maybe for fun, we'll try to zoom in. But let's use Pillow and let's get some information going. Uh, I do have, let's see, we could do a Python console or we can just run this and yeah. Sorry, the zoom bar is in my way. What else is new? Okay. So yeah, if I hit this oh you just don't want to there we go okay so that ran so that's another thing that you know you, know, you can do this in uh any editor but we have uh 
connected and I'd like to set up VS Code to just get it running on this. And we'll dive into more of that in a bit. But as you can see, I keep running this and it's pretty basic. It's just telling me what's the format, what's the size, and what's the mode. Um, that's all fine and dandy, but Python's an interpreted language, right? So let's give ourselves some tools. Um, I'm going to do which pip real quick just to make sure I'm using the virtual environment pip. And then I'm going to say pip install ipython. Ah, oh, that was blazingly fast. Thank you, demo gods. Uh, and I'll type in ipython. And let's just go through here. So from PIL, import image. And then we're going to open the image. And hopefully this will work. Come on, let's see that. And what do we got? So that's the image format. What if we want to know other stuff that this image can do? Well, we have a couple ways. And this is how I tend to explore libraries. Um, the old way I used to do it is I would just press IM and dot and start hitting tab. And as you can see, that'll give you every single object and method that's associated to this instance of an image. So that's kind of fun. And just for fun, let's. Uh, I wonder what this palette one does. Yeah, nothing. So what's well, a better way to do it? And you can say I am, and then you'll say question mark. Um, you don't have to add the question annotation, but I like to in my head. I'll say I am. Uh, anyway, uh, this will tell you, you know, more information about the uh, object that you've instantiated, you know, it's an, image file. Oh, one more thing. I use IPython instead of the standard Python interpreter because it has you know, tab completion and some of these magic little functions. Um, if there are others that people use, definitely feel free to share them in the chat. Uh, yeah. Uh, I was thinking we could do this in Jupyter, but let's, let's stick to this for now. Um, the other main way, the best way to learn uh, or sorry, the second best way to learn a new library is to go through their docs if they have good docs. So, you know, if you want to just convert something to JPEG, this is the tutorial, right? This is a specific kind of documentation here. Um, you know, we have more in the reference, which will tell you exactly what is in the image module. And even then, oh, these are just really nice uh, docs. You know, they have a some examples right away, but also here's all of the functions, right? Image processing functions. Uh, how do you construct a new image? Uh, all sorts of stuff. Uh, let's look at the. Uh, let's look at this one actually as well. From do 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 import tags. Ooh, and how do I get tags from an image? I'm curious. I wonder if I just type. Exif in here. Ah, sweet. So let's try that. So I know this one was taken with the digital camera. So I can do I am X. No? Looks like I'm not reading this correctly. Image get exif. Come on, Ferris. I thought somebody would correct me actually. But, oh well. So we have the exif data in here and i wonder what this is so we can say help exif and it looks like or we can say exif exif and actually oh okay here's something fun see how it says string form here this means that exif has Kind of something, this is more advanced Python, but in here we have a class exif, and somebody went ahead and defined this dunder method, and it will return its own representation. So it'll return self dot whatever the object they're storing in there. So it's kind of interesting that they did it this way, and I'm interested, and in what I just learned right now is that. You know, you can get this. The TLDR is we can do this. 
So we should be able, yes, do string exif. And now you can see, you know, we're getting all kinds of metadata here, but you can see that this photo was taken, you know, with a Sony, and I think I'd need to dig into this more, but to get like ISO and other settings, we could probably pull this somewhere from the exif data. So kind of interesting. Um, that's part of what we can do with hello, but nobody cares about that. We want to do something fun. Let's uh, let's resize the image. Or what's another what's another operation we want to do? Want to color it? Uh, yeah. Let's go back to our tutorial here, and let's do a let's add a filter. That'll be fun. So I'll open SLC. Open it to the right. See, I should stick to things I know, right? Anyway, let's do that. Okay, there we go. So we have this open. Um, we have the file right here, right? I am is now that image. And okay, so from PIL import image filter. And let's see, we do out equals filter. Image filter is the object. And it looks like we have quite a few. So this one's detail, but there it looks like there's a lot. So we could do contour, edge enhance. Let's do edge enhance more. Because why just do a little bit when you could do more? By the way, anybody here familiar with like presets that Instagrammers sell now? I mean, you know, I sound like I'm disparaging, but it's a thing now. If you are, feel free to raise your hand or add it in chat. This is a thing now. People have a business where they just sell Adobe presets, which is, I guess, you know, you can make money how you want. The reason I, I'm kind of dismissive maybe in my tone is uh, this color 3D LUT, that's, that's pretty much what they're selling. And you can build these fairly easily and straightforward. So yeah, if you want to make some money on the side, code up your own with Python. But yeah, let's play with this. So out will be image filter edge enhance more. Out dot, and I think I gotta save it now, no? Out dot uh, edge. Um, somebody correct me, I think this is the, the syntax. Yeah, that worked. Okay, cool. So didn't see too much of a difference. And kind of, you could start to see the edges, you know, a little bit cleaner in here. Let's do more. What's another filter somebody spotted? Somebody suggest one in the chat and I'll run it as a quick tutorial. Or if you're following along, maybe you have a fun one. Any? No? Okay, I'll find one in the reference. Let's see. Let's see. So image filter, do blur, contour, emboss, smooth more. These are all the filters that are specified. Oh wow, and they even have the publications which these are based off. So if you're ever feeling like, you know, I could never code up something like that, well. You can, you're just gonna have to read a lot of books to do it right, so that's fine. Let's do, oh, let's see. blur, okay, good one. I'm wondering how much of a blur, but yeah, let's blur. Let's do, okay, we can actually chain if we want, I think. So let's do this out equals I am a filter. Blur. And I think because out is another image, we could do this. Uh, 
let's just do emboss that'll that'll show it off too now we save that and let's see how did this turn out oh look yeah it's crazy bad now awesome so as you can see you know emboss will kind of give it this rough edge thing you may be wondering what this could be used for but i'm sure somebody in computer vision has uh used this before and they'll say aha ha, look it's all my tricks but i know in uh how do you say in uh 3d modeling this is actually used to create textures uh in a specific way you can do these filters so that's fun let's try it without emboss And remember, we're doing all these operations on the IM object, which is the baseline image. So yeah, so now this is, everything's happening from this slc.jpg. And as you can see, that's blurry. Let's make it really blurry. Um, I wonder if I could do this. And yeah, as you can see, that got a little bit blurrier. So that's fun. Uh, what's an, oh, smooth more. Somebody wants to smooth it more. Okay. I think we can do that. Not just a little bit, but more. So what if you had blur multiple times? Uh, that's what I did right here. So you can chain it and then chain it. If you were to add this filter twice, like uh, as another parameter, if you passed it in twice, it wouldn't work because that's not what it's accepting, but it's doing all of these operations. And then you take the result of this and then you add that operation. So that's what you get on the out. Good question though. Let's see, smooth more. What's that look like? Do, do, do. Oh, it's hard to see the difference on the smooth more, huh? Okay, now that we have a couple images, actually, maybe we should look at the, what are some other things we could look at? We could look at the file size, right? I think so. Just get something, probably get, I don't know what get data is. Oh, image in core. Ooh, bands. There's three bands. Anyway, I'm diving into something I don't fully understand. So I should find the uh, docs. Actually, let's do some geometrical transforms first. Because this is kind of where things get important. So something that might pop up, let's say, and, and where I want to kind of get us to in this, uh, in our agenda, we have, you know, pillow, which is going to be our uh, uh, image manipulation. We have flask, which is going to be web dev. Can somebody see kind of where we're about to go with uh, combining these? That's right, we can write a thumbnailer so, or a rotator or something like that. So this is kind of important on the web. People are now uploading you know, fairly large uh, image files, but they need to be able to be loaded on a cellular network, maybe in the middle of nowhere, Utah. Um, so that's kind of where I want us to get to while we're exploring this. Uh, we'll see how much time we have today, but. Yeah, it's kind of a fun coding session, Python meetup thing. So let's do, let's make out the, let's, uh, how do we do it? Let's, it's not a transpose because that's, oh, it's a resize. Now, I am curious. 
So I'll check the reference. I think we can do a resize on the width and not the height, which was even more important for, and, and so the height will be auto, will, will stay to the aspect ratio of the image. So let's, let's figure that out in a second. So this is their suggestion for doing everything in directory. Um, but I think there is a, I want to, I want to understand the, I want to show the trick. Yeah, so turn a resized copy. So we need to pass in the width and the height. Yeah. And it needs to be a tuple. So notice the trick they did here, though, is you can get the width from the image. So let's take a look at that real quick. So there's the width. There's the height. So now we can say, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think the best way. So let's do out. I am resize. We need a tuple. We want it to be, let's make it a third. And it needs to stay a tuple. So I think that's valid. Okay, we'll do that. Height. Let's divide that by three. And that should work. Uh, let's see. So now that's safe. Yeah, so out dot width and out dot height. Yeah, so those both uh, not crossed. And then everybody know what this double divide thing does? Oh, yes. I barely do. Um, basically, escape character first and no. then divided by three. No, no, no. It's not escape character. It is, uh, it is, uh, what is it called? Not integer division. Uh, oh, sorry. Hmm? Was it flooring? Yes, that's it. That's the word floor. Basically, don't give me a decimal, just round it down. Or mod. Yeah. Uh, mod is uh, mod is different. Yeah, mod's a little bit different. Mod will give you the divisor, so that's uh, not what we're doing. Mod you would use if you want to see if something uh, cleanly divides into something else. But in this case, we know we want to divide it, but we know we don't really want half a pixel, so we're going to floor it. And as you can see, this is now smaller. I'm not zoomed in at all here. This one's not zoomed in at all here. And it's already uh, smaller. So hold on. So what was the width? Uh, can you scroll up a little bit in the command? Yeah. Uh, because I want to see what the width was before we did it. Yeah, let's. So six six thousand forty eight. It was before. So divided by three. Okay. What if it were not uh, evenly divided? So twenty sixteen, but uh, some fraction. Would it round up to the uh, digit? So. It Looks like it rounds down, but that one rounds down, you know, if it was round, yeah. it would always round. So let's do one. Yeah, and I like this. This is exactly what we're doing today. So 2014, not that good at math. So yes, so notice this rounded down, it floors, right? Even though uh, if you divide it by three, technically, if you, and I think this is built in, so I could do 644. Three, and that would go up to 2015. But there is the built in floor, so I can see six, four, divided by three. And as, oh, wait, no, floor is not important. Math and math dot floor. I thought floor was built in. My apologies. There we go. Okay. So, yeah, now we've, uh, we've resized our image. Um, yeah, so that's kind of pillow. Let's start playing with some flask and then we'll combine the two. So switching gears a little bit, we have image manipulation and image is, you know, just a, a 
matrix of pixels and there are different colors of red, green, blue. Um, so let's think. Uh, What's another thing? So what, what's a web page then? Does everybody know what a web page looks like? Like what it really looks like? Have you ever done HTML? Yeah. Have you ever done a uh, view source? You see, oh, this is all just text. Well, everything's just text, right? It's all, you know, HTML. It has a certain set of rules, but all the server is doing is spitting out character by character, this, and then this, and then this, and then this, and it's streaming it over to you with a set of rules that we established a long time ago as devs, um, uh, TCP, IP, all that fun stuff. And instead of having to dig through all those docs and implement this yourself, we have an excellent Python library called Flask. And we will play with the minimal application. Now, what first appealed to me when I started playing with Flask was just this was, first off, they had a phenomenal docs. This is over 15 years ago that even taught you, hey, you should probably use a virtual environment. Here's what you're running into when you're trying to play with Python. So if you've never done anything too intense in Python, highly recommend writing a Flask blog or website for yourself. Um, teaches you everything from WSGI, like advanced stuff to, basics like, oh, how do I like use a template or something like that? For now, we're just going to play with this example specifically, but I will give, I will uh, try to respond with the image. I think this will work. Um, we will have to play with the static files a little. Or do we? TBD. I, I, I think there's a way that we can stream this right. Um, I'm trying to remember, it's been a long time since I used Flask, but I think we could directly stream the image back. And what we'll try to do at the tail end of this whole talk today is we're going to return that image object that we've been playing with as a representation. And then we'll start adding, uh, we'll add a parameter in the route so that we can actually have a dynamic uh, uh, server and we'll play with that. So let's let's back up. First off, let's write a quick hello world. Why not? So here's our hello world, kind of copying the example. We'll combine the two in a moment. Howdy world, that's this. And let's see. So something that's changed since I started with Flask is that it's now a command line thing. It used to be that you would say Flask and then the thing. So we're going to export the Flask app as Flask, hello. And then we'll just type in Flask, Flask run. There we go. So first off to note, if you do go on to prod, make sure you read, or sorry, production. Uh, if you ever let this face the web, you're going to need to make a few tweaks to uh, your configuration to make things nice and safe, because um, the web is a large, dangerous, scary place, but also there are ways to get on there safely. So this is beyond the scope of this talk, but just an FYI. I'm going to command click that and look, we have a website. Hey, look, we even have an image. I'm just kidding. This is a character. As you all know, this is an emoji. It's just a character that we can send, but now that Python 3 is UTF-8 compatible and all that fun jazz, we can actually send it as a native string. Nothing special required. So that's kind of fun. Let's play with Flask a little bit more. Again, excellent docs. I'm going to try to remember how to do request data. That's what we want to play with. So crash course in web development. Um, we make a request to a server. The request fits out some string of data. Um, there's two different verbs that we can use to make a request. We can make a get request or a post request. A get request, you send data via the URL. The post request, you will send data via a body, which is something that the user won't see on the URL, but it's something like a file or a form that you filled out. Um, and it is a larger set of things. Uh, suffice to say, get and post have different uses on the web. Use a get when you're trying to like filter some existing data or 
you are not expecting to change the data. And if you want to be restful, you only use a post or a put, use a very specific set of verbs to change data. So if you're going to change data, it should be a post. That's, these are all, again, rules of thumb. I'm sure somebody will be correcting me in the chat. Um, yeah, let's take a look. So this is the request object. Da, 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 da. Let's add a, we're gonna add only a get request to this. And basically what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna take that Salt Lake City image and we're gonna uh, host it using Flask. And we're going to change how it gets hosted depending on, uh, on a couple things. So, so whatever the person puts in here. So basically, I want this to say, uh, right now we'll change the hello world. So we'll say greeting equals hello. And nothing changes, right? We haven't changed any of the code to change this. However, we will notice, here's the server log, that we are getting this. So let's say, and if somebody's better at Flask than me, definitely correct me here, but I'm gonna say get, and then I think we should be able to say quest here. And because we're in the app, I think we should be able to say request dot print quest dot get, I think, anybody know offhand? I'm trying to remember, request.args.get. Oh, let's just see all args, whatever. So we'll hit refresh here. After I save this, do I need to stop this and restart it? And unexpected. Haha, <laughs> look, I'm already coding a bug. Methods. I'm supposed to be pair programming, everybody. Come on, you're supposed to correct me before I make these mistakes. So as you can see, we now get this immutable multi-dick that's being printed here. We're gonna do a quick uh, Python 3 trick. And we're gonna say, for the greeting, we'll say greeting equals what? We'll say the request dot request dot args dot get. And then we can say greeting. And what's nice about this get operator is we can give it a default. So we'll give it a default. And then in here, we'll just say greeting. And so now when I refresh this, nothing will happen because we have to reset the server. Um, and now it'll say hello. When did Python become EGF compatible? Uh, with Python 3. And it actually broke a lot of stuff with Python uh, code. It was very contentious. But I think looking in hindsight, it was a good decision. A okay. good question. But was it the specific version of it or is it starting everything 3.0? Everything 3.0. So strings became Unicode. Okay, got it, thank you. If you still need access to a byte type string, which is what the old ones were, you can say, oh, let's play with this a little bit. Mm, no, I, at this moment I don't need, but... Uh... You earlier you mentioned about this emoji and uh, I wrote it down, I tried to Google, I couldn't find the exact answer. So that's why I asked. Yeah. Just so you can see, this is now a string in Python natively. If you did this in Python 2, um, it would it would still be, oh, let me show you. It would say byte string maybe, I'm trying to remember how to use Python 2 for example type thing, notice it's bytes. So just a, an FYI there. And actually this will probably, it's a good thing you brought this up. This is probably gonna become relevant for this next trick that we're gonna do. So is everybody clear on how this is working? 
So we have a, a, a greeting uh, parameter here that we're sending and we're telling it say howdy. If I said nothing in here, nothing would show up. But if I gave it no arguments whatsoever, it would still say howdy. So the reason is if I get none, which is a very specific type, um, then just get howdy. If I can't find it, then get howdy. Um, and it's whatever default we want here. Uh, let's try. So now, okay, now we're jumping into intermediate. So basics are done. Let's, uh, let's save our, our progress a little bit. This commit will what, add. I'm going to add all these uh, images. We'll add a last example. And let's see if I remember this one off the top of my head. This is a cool trick uh, if it works. Seven? Yeah. So there's a magic. If it starts with percent in IPython, it's called a magic function. This magic function, save, will save all the work that we just did into a uh, file. <laughs> and so now we have, as you can see, we have like all the. Oh, crap. yeah. And it's uh, only on VS or can no, no. Talk? This is because we're using IPython. Oh, so. on IPython. Yes. Okay. So move it to let's see. So now that's up on the servers in case if somebody wanted to see all the fun stuff we did. And yeah. Um, so now we're going to combine a couple things. We've done you know, kind of a whirlwind tour of pillow, whirlwind tour of flask. Let's combine, let's forget about this one. We won't do that. Let's combine flask and pillow. Um, specifically, now that we've been playing with this image object and we still have it loaded up in memory right here. I'm curious if we can get a byte representation out of this. Does anybody know offhand before I? Oh, there we go. Before I try to print that. Yeah, that's a very, very long thing. And let's, uh, let's make a copy of this. And we'll rename it to pill flask. And let's stop our server here with control C. And let's see, export. What is it? What is it? Flask app. Pill flask. And I should be able to type that. Last one. Yeah, OK, so I did that right. And now we got to what? We're going to take some of the work that we did here. So let's open it to the side. Oops. There we go. So now you know we can take these, do that. So we'll get those imports in. Let's be more explicit with our file name because you know we're more intermediate now. We know better than to just put that in there. Um, later we could maybe 
add this as a method, right? We could say, hey, I want to get this specific file name, but for now, we save it as a, a file name, then we can change it in this next part. So we'll say what? My image equals image.open file name. And Flask returns the string. So in this case, what did we discover? It was im dot two bytes. And if this works, I've never tried this before, by the way, I'm just going by my knowledge of like how the web works. But if this works and how I think Flask works, we should get the image or I'll break everything. It's probably the latter. Yeah, it looks like I broke everything. Let's see. Yeah. Time to double check what I did wrong. I, I think you have to do like a send file with the bytes for with Flask. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I was just Googling some trying to Google I had a little. I'll drop a link that has some examples if you'd like. Yeah, please do. Now I can find my chat button. And oh no. It's like the third or fourth one down. Um, yeah, I see that one right there. That's a good example right there. I think that. So if you already have the bytes, you may you may be able to start there. Yes. So we don't need to do this part. We already did that, but we do need to send the the meme type. We don't want to send it as an attachment because that'll make it so our browser thinks it should save it right away. Yes. Yeah. So, but we do need the attachment file name, do we? Let's this try. May not, this may not be a good example. Sorry. No, no, no. Don't apologize. You added more than I did. Jeez. Who's speaking, by the way? Is that Mark? Yes, Mark. Yeah, no worries. I, I sincerely appreciate that. Like, this is the most informal. This is probably we're very informal. So let's let's play with this. Let's play with return send file i think you're absolutely right this is probably a safety thing i didn't even realize but yeah look so as i'm typing in the in the editor it's telling me you know all of these things and you know we've gotten to the first parameter it can be path light or string or binary io and in this case it is a binary io i think hopefully we'll see um and we're going to say the mim type now is a uh image jpeg right who's good at that stuff i think it's image is it like that yeah uh, it's image JPG. say again yeah you got it right okay cool and then and all these other things i get that i don't know if i need the attachment file name. let's play with this let's see what happens no mark i sincerely appreciate it so don't don't dismiss yourself please I'll claim credit if it works. Otherwise, <laughs> that works for me. Let's just man click that. Yay, internal server error. So I'll take credit. <laughs> Bytes object has no attribute. Just so I'm not crazy, I think. Because if it's a generator, then that would also make sense. Yeah, it's not a generator, so, so we're good. Okay, I won't get into what I was trying to do here, but. Here we go. Stack Overflow to the rescue. Oh, I see. This is clever. This is very clever. OK, let me walk through what this is doing. Um, 
String IO, is that a built in? Does anybody know offhand? I think it is. Oh, the other thing to always check is the dates. Ah, Python 3 requires byte IO. See, that was a Python 2. And look, a reference to something that doesn't work. So, ah, uh, look, this is a better one. Use byte IO. Ah, that makes sense. So just as we were talking about the, the, uh, the difference between Python 2 and 3, here's another one. So. The fact is, we have to be explicit about bytes. I hope. File name, so here's image. Interesting, though. Before I do that, I'm just going to do a sanity check right here, where I'm not changing, I'm not sending the bytes. Explicitly, what if it turns out I could just do this? Nope. Oh, because this isn't defined. Let's get rid of that. Nope. I think you have to import IO and then run it from IO. There you go. Yeah, you're right. So we're going to save this it's a JPEG quality, which will also re reduce the quality, but also reduce the file size. So that's cool. Seek. So this is kind of more advanced, but basically because we wrote into this file handler, we now have to go back to the front. So it's kind of a cursor. It's kind of like adding a character, 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 character. Um, but it doesn't really have a track of like where we've been adding characters. So now we'd have to go, if we were to just send it like this, it would be blank, right? We wouldn't have anything. So we're saying start from the beginning again. And that's yeah, getting more advanced than I thought it would be. Oh, and then this would help. I think that's actually the meme type. And stop that. And if this doesn't work, then I will. Yay, okay, it worked. So here we go. And as you can see, well, maybe you can't see. The quality is a little bit lower, but yeah, this is actually it's not too noticeable. If you start pixel peeping in the in the in the trees here, you can kind of see it. So that's fun. So now what we can do is let's play with what we were just doing and uh, let's add a few more. Uh, uh, configs to this specifically. Let's add a let's say would be a good one. So somewhere here. we can do some of the, the stuff that we've been doing. So, uh, sorry, let's grab this one, paste it in here, and let's say resize. Uh, and 
we'll have this default to one. And let's say now, If there is something that might make it easier, hmm. do a thumbnail, it saves it in place, by the way. You don't have to actually reset it, but I guess that works too. Uh, I don't want to save the original file in place though, right? Oh. I don't want to do an operation it's on that. It's your original way. Yeah. True. I just, want to, I just want to temporarily change it as it displays on the web page, right? So we're kind of building a, an in-memory file resizer thing, but I like the idea. Thanks for the suggestion. Height, resize multiplier. And it would help if I you have remembered the name of my variables. Say again? Oh, sorry, you got it, yeah. Yeah. So this should run, okay? And now if I say resize, and I say 10, it should make it tiny. Ah, I broke everything. This is this is what development looks like. Unsupported operand type. So what I did wrong, so I need to cast this. So I need to tell exactly what uh, kind of, uh, how do you say, what kind of uh, type it is. So everything that gets passed up in here is a string. Even though I put in an int, it'll be logged as a string until I change the, the type. And there we go. So now I should be able to make it tiny. Look at that, I made it tiny. I'm actually pretty impressed with myself that this demo worked, I'm not gonna lie. Let's add one more. Uh, what was one that we had fun with? Let's make a Boolean blur or smooth. Yeah. And this time, let's make it a Boolean. And so default will be false. If blur, we now have to take that blur and I'm gonna just say it's a number. If blur, and then I actually have to, it's probably a better way to write this. Somebody probably knows. Boom. And we'll just do that. I think there's a cleaner way to write this, but for now, does everybody get what this is about to do? I can add one more and I'll say blur equals one. And I should start my server back up. And I broke everything, of course. I see. Ha, if blur, if paint. there, force a cast, uh, I gotta restart. There we go. So now it's blurry, as you can see, and now it shouldn't be. And uh, back to that, point of image, uh, like saving in place as a thumbnail or what have you, like that's part of what I want to be able to do, right? Is we have uh, we have your, your main asset and let's say you were making a photo gallery. So 
you could build out something like this as just a, uh, a bunch of uh, images. So actually, I'm going to do one more. Should I? Yeah. Eh. Yeah, let's have fun with this. So let's build a gallery. Uh, which helps if I can spell. So this is how you can do a multi-line string. And we're gonna be, we'll have some fun with this. So now our image source is gonna be resize 10. Blur equals one. And let's do one where it's like that and that. And route it like that. So now notice we have this gallery uh, route. So if I restart, if everything goes well, I should be able to go to here and go and say gallery and if this doesn't work i know why okay so there we go so now we got both images and we have our source code and as you can see we're just doing that and i broke everything somehow so let me, let me wrap this with something Yeah, if it's not, it's not obvious. I mean, it should. It, maybe, it, maybe it's clicking for some folk, but you could, this is extremely powerful, right? Like you could build an entire website, build a gallery. If you hooked this up to a database, for example, you could start doing stuff like build your own Tumblr or Flickr or Instagram. Fun fact: Instagram's hosted with Python, so you wouldn't be the first. Um, but yeah, these are the tools that you have. And mixing them together, that's the power of Python. It's the second best language at everything. Um, but taking two, you know, well-designed libraries and combining them, that's quite the, the superpower of uh, Python. So any questions or anything else that we should try out before I call it for now? Um, if we have time, I was thinking of, of setting up Docker with Python 3.10. Um, but that one, yeah, I... I is that Actually, second best language? What is first? Yeah. The first is is whatever language specializes in the domain that you're doing. So if you're doing something like writing a video game, um, Python might give you, you know, something like Pygame and it'll let you sketch out and do just a quick demo of the game, but it's not going to be the most performant language necessarily for that video game, right? Um, you might use something like C sharp, but C sharp isn't the best language for like doing data analysis or data science, um, there's probably another language that's better, right? So Python, that's kind of the joke is that it's the second best language at pretty much everything. Um, so if you want to get something sketched out or minimal viable, whatever, I say use Python, get it sketched out. And if you need to refine and get something more performant, take that and work on, on uh, use a different language. So, and just never use PHP. Um, just kidding. <laughs> but you don't need to anymore is my point with this. Um, uh, so I built an application for internal use uh, uh, at our company. But uh, recently we had uh, security upgrades. And uh, uh, I, I'm not experiencing on my computer, but uh, some other users, when they install Python, uh, Downloading the installation file from the Python Foundation website didn't help. You had to go through the Microsoft uh, Store to install it. But once you do that, uh, the application failed. And we just encountered it uh, earlier today, literally like three hours ago. And I'm still trying to figure out what happened. But uh, when you import libraries, like import uh, OS and so on, uh, it would stumble upon import requests. And uh, I thought I had everything installed through PIP, 
but uh, something is off and uh, I'm puzzled by this. So if I was in your shoes, the first thing I would do is in here, you can always do sys and sys dot. Yeah, sys dot path. So if you do these two commands, this is telling you where it's getting all its imports from. So specifically, I would make sure that your site packages is being referenced and it's being referenced from your virtual environment if you're using a virtual environment. If you're not, I can't really do tech support further, um, but that's, that's pretty much what I'd say. Okay. Other, other questions? Should we try to do? I was wondering if my Docker is working locally. Actually, I'd, I just I'd really be interested in seeing the Docker with three ten. Fine. I'm just kidding. Let's let's see what happens. Okay, Docker's hopefully going to be up and running. How likely are you to recommend? I just never have that conversation with anybody. Actually, should I recommend it to everybody right now? I don't know. Docker, for those who don't know. It's basically a way to kind of store a, an operating system in a file. That's the really short version, but basically you can set up the environment in which your code would be running in a very specific way. I'm going to look up the Python, or did I have a demo already? Hold on. I don't want to open as a workspace. I think I have it here. Here we go. Ha ha. Thank you, past tense Ferris. Um, okay. I'm going to go ahead and make a new Docker file in here. And I think we should be able to just get rid of this. And how do I know? I can check Docker Hub real quick. So for people who don't know, you know, this is, these are pre-built, uh, I'm gonna say images. I'm gonna get the terminology wrong, so please don't quote me. Um, but these are pre-built uh, images that should have, specific tags yeah there we go so we got uh these tags up and running so just so people know uh well, and i guess it even has this in here um we can specify how we're uh sorry which uh operating system is being used and i think if i does anybody know the difference between bullseye and the rest i know that's or sorry this is the latest debian isn't it yeah huh let's find out there's you can either use debian uh ubuntu or alpine and alpine's kind of specifically for docker um lots of people will end up defaulting to this and that's totally fine everybody has their own preference i personally have been using uh what have i been using i've been using and I even have my even had a demo of like my full project. This one's not this was like part of research for work, so I don't know if I'm allowed to show this, but whatever. This is kind of like the best way to build Docker files, I've noticed from here on out. And this is like a lot more in depth, but you know, it layers your build. You're using Uvicorn. Um Again, we were talking about production deploys. This one's much safer for production deploys because you can set up which one is your production and what's being run here. A bit too advanced for this demo. Suffice to say, yeah, I'm using Slim. So I'm gonna try doing that here. And 
da, 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 da. copy this, pip install with the requirements, copy. Um, what's the thing I need? I need to do an export. Man, you're really testing my, my dev skills. I feel like I'm in a job interview. This is great. Okay, so that's what I needed. This environment variable. And I'm going to say, ah, what have I been exporting this whole time? It's Flask app, right? And then we need PIL, Flask, and then Python. We don't need to run it like this. We just run Flask. And I I think the only other thing we need to do is expose 5,000. Was that what it was? Yeah. So that'll say, ah, not export, expose. Yeah. I think this will work. Let's find out. I'm gonna find out how good I am at Docker too. Build, tag it as uh, October demo. I'll say dot, which means reference anything that's called Docker file in the current directory. So what's happening right now is we're building our own image based on another image, right? So that's why we have this from directive saying, hey, this is the base image. And then we're gonna build another image. And here's some of the directives. We're gonna set up a workspace directory called user source app. We're going to copy the requirements file in. Oh, you know what? Oh, and then we're going to copy everything in, which is fine right here. Um, this pip should be part of this Python install, right? Notice that we didn't have to install it here. And it made it all the way through. Expose 5000, command flask. This is all set up. Uh, is it the good? Well, can I ask a stupid question? They're not stupid. Uh, I don't know. What to, I heard Docker a couple of times, but I don't know what it does. Uh, as I, yeah, and I, I, I think, hold on. Uh, oh, oh, we got to the bottom of this. Oh, I forgot to say run again. Ha ha ha. Sorry, let me rebuild this. And while well, that's, uh, Rebuilding, I'll explain things a little bit better. I would call Docker OS virtualization versus VMs are hardware virtualization. That's a good way to put it. Hey, is this working? No, it's not. Uh, I wonder why. Do I need to do this? Uh, I am still not clear on the. Uh, virtualization of operating system versus virtual virtual machine. What does that mean? So you can create Windows on a Linux machine, or uh, you can now. I think that it didn't used to be the, the case, but that's a that's a good way to think about it. It's it's a definition of the operating system image that you want to run. Ah, I don't know how to put this. How do you explain Docker? Wasn't it port, export, port? Is it export? Or expose port. I think we need to add port. Maybe I'm mistaken. Uh, it's running on 5,000. I thought I had to say internal to external. And notice in the log, we're not getting the response back. So it's not making it to the server. We'll time box another like five minutes to, to fix this, but if I don't have a fix, I'm not gonna beat myself up. <laughs> Hello, Will. I wonder if that's the case here. So I just noticed this uh, host. And I wonder if I have to run. I'll look at this. I wonder. 
I have to expose it one more time. Well, I thought that would be built in. Nope, that wasn't it. Anybody else have a idea why it's not working? Somebody else's random blog spam. I wonder, so what I'm seeing here, by the way, this host to zeros is a, yeah, look, there we go. It's not gonna get captured and exposed because localhost doesn't get exposed. So let's make this change really quick. And, I think, yeah, they're going to say Python app. I think we can do, we can say Python PIL flask.py. And let's actually do this correctly. Sorry. Let's build it one more time. So notice when we make a change to the image, Notice it has a lot of this stuff cached, by the way. We didn't have to repeat the steps, only this last step. It's kind of clever like that. Let's see if that did it. Ooh, this is looking more promising. Yeah, uh, let's see. No? Ah, so close, yet so far. But didn't you put uh, port 80 in the file? Did I? You're right. Good point. Actually, I don't know if I needed to rebuild this, but I'm going to anyway. <laughs> There we go, that did it. So now we're running localhost 5000 and it looks like we got this. And let's see, if we do gallery, yay, we got our two. And then it should have made two uh, calls right here. Yep, there we go. So now, you know everything that you need to know to be hired as a junior developer anywhere. No, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> this this should expose anybody who's kind of new at this to what's involved in, in a more robust uh, Python program. So yeah, thanks for the hint there. I'm glad somebody pair programmed and saw that. Uh, let me do this real quick. And alrighty. And I just want to make sure. Yeah, we got our push up. So now we have our Docker file. And if you want to go very, 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 very fancy, I think, yeah, that worked. 
if you're in GitHub, this is another reason I, I try to teach with VS Code. As of, I think a couple months ago, if you're in GitHub and you're logged in and you're looking at a repo and you just hit dot, like the period key, you now have access to VS Code in a browser. This is extremely powerful for a number of reasons. Um, but one of the biggest reasons is it's a full on like machine under the hood that you're being given. In fact, you should be able to open. Da, 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 da. There is a way to open a, a terminal. Ugh, I can't remember right now. I'm starting to burn out. I've been in uh, Zooms all day. So there's a way to open a terminal. There's a way to actually run Docker on the web. It's pretty awesome. And then there's a way this will actually set up a mini web server for you and you can demo this and show all your friends. So um, it is just a dev environment. So don't host anything too serious on there, but it is, it's, it's kind of a nice tool to have in your back pocket. Uh, I've definitely, uh, uh, done this with an iPad before actually this year where I just wanted to code something out and yeah, it's pretty incredible. So this is fairly recent and I recommend that everybody gives it a try and yeah. GitHub.dev, I guess is the new thing there, but yeah. Cool. That's what I have for today's talk. I will add one more piece of code and that is going to be our raffle and yeah we do this with python so let's take a look so oh i forgot to give a step to everybody first um we have a uh, meetup called, or sorry, this Slack channel. So if you want to enter the raffle, you need to enter this specific Slack channel, which I'll copy to general. And you should just be able to click on this and it should join you into this channel. So make sure you join this channel. I'll give everybody a few moments to join the channel, look to others. And uh, yeah, give me one sec. I'll be right back. I just want to get the raffle prize. Hello again. So speaking of Python hardware, we were looking at Mute Editor, specifically written for devices like this, so that you can teach a kid Python without having to go through all of this installation stuff, or if they didn't have um, their own dedicated laptop to work on, or if you just want to learn how hardware works. This specific object is called a Pi Portal. Um, it takes an SD card. Um, uh, it let's see what is this? Thing? Oh yeah, this up here is a uh, Wi-Fi antenna and it takes a uh, uh, USB-C power and it's super portable and very, very low voltage. So you could put this pretty much anywhere and you could build you know, a weather display app or you can build whatever you can think of that you want on a tiny little screen and it's all Python, which is kind of amazing. Python running on that tiny little Atmel chip right there. Um, it might not be this kind of device, but we are giving out a circuit Python and we should give out, let's give out one today uh, for our October raffle. Uh, yeah. And is everybody in the channel? And if Jeffrey wins, I guess he's being nice enough. Maybe he'll, he'll get it. But actually, you got to be present to win. So maybe I should uh, 
there's few enough people I can just, yeah, hi pal. Uh, let's just do this this way. I'm just hand typing your name, so sorry if I'm too lazy to hit that shift button. The reason I, I typically have people in the channel when it's uh, quite a few people, I'll just go like who, and then you can just copy this. And then, you know, in Python, I could just say Pythonistas. I had to do this at work today, actually. It's kind of funny. Somebody gave me a huge request of uh, they needed 110 genes uh, to be filtered on this Django app. And at some point, I was like, oh, I'll have to surround all this in quotes. And you don't have to surround all this in quotes. You could just do Pythonistas on split. And then notice it's now an array. Huzzah, but I just mainly wrote one here. Does that look like a valid code? Looks, looks good to me. It's yeah. like it's a valid uh, pull request. There we go. Got pair programming. Oh, look, line one invalid. What are you talking about? You're invalid. What the heck? Where's my invalid? Geez, sneaking in just to get, win the raffle, huh, Dylan? Yes, hopefully. Austin, you're the winner. Uh, congrats. If you would kindly send me your address via Slack, I will add you to my spreadsheet of people I need to send raffle prizes to. Will do. Thanks for putting this on, Paris. Yeah, no worries. Thank you for joining. Our right. next meetup will be the first Wednesday of uh, uh, November. And I'm trying to remember what that is. Cal. Cal 11. Cal 11. That's the year 11. There we go. I always forget these Unix commands. So that's November 3rd will be our next meetup. I highly encourage, especially people in this group, uh, please uh, feel free to give a talk. I um, uh, appreciate all of you being here. If you need any career coaching, please let me know. Hit me up in the Slack. And other than that, I'm going to put my kiddo to bed as well. So. Yeah, thanks for joining. Austin, please Thank send uh, that Slack when you can. Very interesting. Thank you. It was fun. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you, Paris.